So I made a couple of videos that got a lot of attention, and uh, with that, of course, there came a, a lot of reactions, uh, with the overwhelming majority being positive, and I really appreciate that. But there were also quite a few interesting comments, uh, and a few specifically who were, were like, oh, look, science is bad, science is broken, we should... We should defund science, and uh, we also there was also one at least one comment about how I'm funded by Big Maga, and uh, yes, I will, yeah, I will have to confess I am definitely funded by Big Maga, and uh, I talk to Big Donny on the phone every day. We we laugh about how we're gonna take down academia from the inside. Of course, they it only makes sense that they would fund a random postdoc in Denmark to take down academia from the inside. It's, uh, it's, it's obvious, really. But um, anyway, I wanted to make a video about why I think science is actually worthwhile and why, yes, there are severe issues with academia and there is a lot of room for improvement, but that doesn't mean that science isn't worth it and or science is all bullshit and we should defund science. And uh, it is very easy to focus on the negatives and uh, and be another academic whiner, but uh, I don't really want to be that. There are plenty of people who whine about academia on the internet, and uh, I'm just trying to portray things as, uh, as I see them, really. Uh, so in this video, I thought I'd focus a little bit more on the positives and be... Uh, and then basically say, tell you why I think academia is actually good. So there is quite a lot of research that's probably never going to be used and never going to lead to much. But but I think in the grand scheme of things, I think that the things that does end up being useful is so valuable that there is a, it's not a problem to fund whatever doesn't work. And it can be very difficult to determine what's actually going to be worthwhile or not before you actually do it. And <clears throat> it can also take decades from research being done till it's actually implemented in a in any meaningful way like um, an, an example I have for my field which is organic chemistry and a subfield of organic chemistry is uh, is natural product synthesis and uh, so the way that natural product synthesis work is that you take a very you find a very complicated molecule in nature and then you try to synthesize it and because this molecule is so complicated, you usually have to start out with an enormous amount of starting material, and then you do a bunch of steps, and you end up with a tiny amount of product, and in itself, this is never going to be scaled up, it's never going to be used for anything. In itself, it seems pretty useless. But, in order to actually make these complicated molecules, you often need to have develop new methodology, new synthetic methodology, and this methodology is often used to uh, develop new drugs or compounds that are actually useful. And as a, as a real-life example, I have uh, had a professor who, uh, in the 90s, synthesized some peptide, and uh, over two decades later, it was part of one of the COVID vaccines. So you never really know what is actually going to be useful, and it can be very difficult to determine what's actually going to be useful. The obvious and most uh, most famous example is probably uh, the theory of relativity that was uh, uh, famously ridiculed for being useless, but that turned out to be very valuable, as we today have GPS, for example. And so the point I'm making is that it can often be very difficult to determine what uh, what's actually going to be useful research and what's not. Uh, another thing that I've noticed is, uh, from my personal experience, is that the less experience people have with research, the more they expect. They don't completely understand the limitations of what is realistically achievable. So let's say I come up with a new method for improving cancer treatment. And I present this at a group meeting, and there are going to be undergraduate students, there are going to be graduate students, and there are going to be a professor. So the undergraduate student 
is probably, in my experience, is going to be like, what's the point of improving this treatment? Why aren't you curing cancer? And that's clearly because they don't understand that if I say I'm going to cure cancer, that's ridiculous. I would never be able to do that. That's way too ambitious. A graduate student, on the other hand, will have a better understanding of the limitations. They might be still be quite critical of the fact that I'm not being more ambitious, but the professor will probably be, oh yeah, that's a good idea. And you have to realize that if we never did any cancer research, if the requirement to do any cancer research was we cure cancer, then there would be no cancer treatment. There would be like, if you go to the doctor and they tell you you have cancer, they would also tell you to just go home and wait to die. And you know, that might actually happen, but that's more of a doctoring problem than a science problem, I, I would say. And again, the point is that it's difficult for people who have never been engaged with research to actually understand the limitations, and they have this expectation that every research project is going to be curing cancer or something of the likes. And I think that's part of the reason for people being somewhat um, critical of, uh, of science in general, maybe. Of course, you also have people with uh, where it, it <laughs> science can break with their uh, view on life. It feels like a personal attack when a scientist says something that isn't isn't in line with their values or whatever. As for the funding, yes, there are definitely some problems, and the winning strategy of uh, of academia is definitely to grab as much taxpayer money as you can, but that in itself isn't necessarily such a problem, because money that goes as salaries to researchers, at least in theory, that should go back in, in uh, circulation. That should be used for when they buy groceries or pay rent. Of course, this might not be the case anymore, unfortunately, but that's more of a systemic issue with the financial system than... Uh, than uh, academia. I think the bigger problem is companies surrounding science that are hoovering up a lot of the funding that goes into science for with, with very little contribution. particular example of this is academic publishing. And academic publishing is a well-known scam within academia. So um, the way academic publishing works is that researchers conduct research, they produce results, they write a paper, and then they submit it to a journal. The journal then sends an email to another group of researchers to review the paper that was written. This goes back and forth a few times, and then the academic publisher puts the paper as a PDF on a website. And most funding agencies, in at least in Europe and the US, require researchers to publish open access, meaning that anyone can access these, uh, these papers. And in order to do that, they have to pay the publisher an extortionate amount of money. And so the publishers are hoovering up a bunch of money and hoarding wealth that was originally taxpayer money. And that, I think, is one of the major issues with the funding of science today, in my opinion. And, you know, this could be remedied, this could be fixed, but there doesn't seem to be much incentive to actually fix it. People like the traditional way of doing things at this point, I think. And it breaks the hierarchy to some extent. So yeah, I think the big problem with funding science today isn't doesn't have anything to do with the research that's being done or the money that goes to the actual scientists. I think the major issue is the industries that are surrounding science who are hoovering up all the money that's being given to scientists. And um, and the, the ironic thing is that a lot of the people who are anti-funding of science are also pro-billionaires, so in reality they should really be pro-funding of science, since that funnels money into billionaires' hands. 
Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, the point of this video was to, sh to, to highlight that actually science is worthwhile, despite there being a lot of severe issues within academia, there are also a lot of severe issues within every part of society. But of course, I'm focusing on academia here, and I don't think that the rest of the world is perfect. But yeah. That's, uh, that's all I have for this video, and uh, if you want to watch some of my other videos, Feel free, uh, and I'll uh, see you in the next one.